This is the Raw Misfit Show, where two long-term raw vegans explore diet and lifestyle solutions to modern-day health issues. Episode 2, the most popular questions we get as raw vegans. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. My name is Jeanette, and today I am going to be talking with you about doing the impossible. Impossible, oh, I guess it's backwards here, right, for you guys? Impossible, impossible is just an opinion. Impossible is an opinion. So 12 years ago, my friends and family told me that it was going to be impossible for me to be healthy just eating fruit and vegetables. Well, guess what? 11 years later, okay, so 12 years ago, I went vegetarian, and 11 years ago, I went raw vegan. And it turns out it's possible, it's possible to be extremely healthy just eating fruit and veggies. I'm gonna be bringing in my friend Matt for our weekly show, and this week's episode is about the top 10 questions, most popular questions that Matt and I get asked on a daily basis about the raw vegan lifestyle. Matt is here, so I just gotta requ- uh, ask him to request. What's up, Forty? What's up, Boo? What's up, Jesse? 11 years, yes, and it was impossible. They told me I was crazy, uh, I was a fanatic, I was obsessed, I was gonna get sick, I was gonna die of a protein deficiency, and it apparently it didn't happen. So, by the way, It's a very bad storm here. It's very loud thunder and lightning, and actually um, there's a lot going on, so just bear with me, but I'm gonna try to ignore it. The show must go on, and let me finally bring Matt in here. Ugh. Okay. Hey. (laughs) How's it going? I'm good, just making my morning smoothie here. Yeah, very nice. Okay, I got my juice. You got your smoothie. Nice. Look at us pretending to be healthy online. <laughs> so the uh, the fire is all taken care of. Who knows? I'm I'm willing to die for this show. So I'm not sure what's going on out there, but apparently, yeah, guys, there's a very bad storm here in uh, South Florida, mm. and um, the there's something wrong with the electricity in my building. I uh, whatever. Hey, I, I, I might die for this show. It's worth it. It's worth it. So now we are thank everyone for being here. Thank you, Matt, for being you. And we are going to start with the questions. We have the top 10 questions about a raw vegan lifestyle. Okay. Sweet. So it is very sweet. So it's a sweet lifestyle. So now the number one question is uh, what are you going to do with all those bananas, Matt? That's the number one question. Yeah, I, that's literally the most asked question I get as a raw vegan. Uh, I don't know what it is about bananas, but like I could have six watermelon. Nobody says anything. <laughs> I could have like 10 things of blueberries. Nobody, nobody bats an eye. But if I have like eight or more bunches of bananas, everybody flips out and Blue like, yeah. yeah, it's just <laughs> like, I'm, I don't know. It's the weirdest thing. But yeah, so uh, I, my answer to them is always, you know, I got to feed the monkey at home. Uh, but uh, yeah, so no, I, I just let them know, hey, you can make nice cream. You can replace your ice cream with frozen bananas. You can make smoothies. You can just have them on their own. Um, so I just try to use it as an educational opportunity and, and share the, the knowledge about how to use bananas for all the people that uh, don't know how to eat fruit. Yes, I love it. And blink of an eye, we got your questions. So we're going to answer that in the Q&A section. I just want you to know. Thank you for being here. We got you, boo. She had a great question. Okay, so let's get serious, Matt. Stop playing around. Number one, why? So so the number one, so what we're going to do, Matt, I hope it's okay. We're going to alternate the answer. So I'll ask you, and then I'll ask myself, I guess. (laughs) I like it. Number one, why did you go raw and what are the benefits? Mm, Great question. So the reason why I went raw, I actually didn't even plan on going raw. Um, 
you know, it's, it's just one of those things that kind of organically happened for me. And, you know, once I started to feel the benefits, because I started out with just a juice fast, um, you know, you can do it a, a lot of different ways, but I just started out with the juice fast. Um, and I just started to feel little kitty here. <laughs> I just started to feel the benefits, the energy, my energy levels went up, my sleep got way better. Uh, my toxic thinking habits started to decrease significantly. And that was actually one of the things that I really noticed. And I really just was so intrigued by, you know, I was just wondering, like, my thoughts are changing. And so I, I got so interested in fruits and vegetables that I became this crazy, um, you know, raw vegan that only eats raw fruits and vegetables, essentially. And I, I kind of just transformed my whole life. You know, all my, my child, my, um, my health issues as a child went away. And, uh, you know, it just, just made me a way happier person. And so I feel like, you know, fruits are bright and colorful and sweet and fun. And that's what I want to have in my life. See, there you go. There it is. <laughs> and so I think if you eat those types of foods, you become that, you take on that energy and that frequency. And so that is, that is what makes me stay raw and, and really what uh, excited me once I got onto this path. I love it. I love it. Okay. Number two question is, do I need to be 100% raw to get all the benefits? Okay. So people ask me all the time, do I need to go 100% raw? And the answer is absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's what you do most of the time. It's what you do most of the time that matters. Okay. Arnold Eret is one of our mentors, both of us. And um, he always said that if you eat 51% raw and 49% uh, cooked or unhealthy, then you're still going to receive some of the benefits, right? You know, we need to focus on being consistent not being perfect. We don't need to be perfect. We never will be. We've got to accept that. That's just, you know, as something as all humans need to accept, especially women. We always want to be like the prettiest or the best or this, you know, have the best body. Somebody's always going to be prettier, uh, sexier, smarter, more talented. That's okay. That's okay. We do our best and that's all we need to do. And so you don't need to be 100% raw in order to get a lot of the benefits, seriously. Um, and then Matt spoke a little bit about his benefits. Some of mine that I got um, is I cleared my skin. I, um, I stopped having chronic fatigue. I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome when I was 16. Um, I have lots of energy. I, um, my hair is so much longer and thicker than it ever was. I was losing my hair, actually. I realize now that when I was a teenager, I had very thin hair and it was always coming out and I was so scared of that. But um, yeah, since going raw, it has helped me with that. Um, and then honestly, so many more benefits mentally. Okay, not just physically, mentally. So no, you don't need to be 100% raw. And just remember 51 versus 49. 51% of your diet, if, if, if you are eating mostly healthy, you will feel mostly healthy. If you're eating, you know, listen, hey, you want, if you want to be crazy and eat 100% healthy and, and, you know, you want to get 100% of the best, that's what we're here for. We're here to help you understand that it's not impossible to just eat fruit and vegetables. I don't know if you saw the beginning, Matt, but I truly uh, was told that it was impossible to be healthy eating just fruit and vegetables. Were you also told this crazy lie? Oh, yeah. My, my friends freaked out. They were just like, you're not going to get enough protein. They're like, you can't you can't get the same protein from plants that you do from meat. And I was just yeah. like, hey, okay. You know, the, I've found that it's, it's best a lot of times to let, the, uh, let, let your actions or let your results do the talking for you. Um, so I, I didn't really argue too much with them. I just kind of let them think what they wanted to. And over the years that I've been doing this, they have then come back to me asking for advice and for help. So gotta let your results do the talking for you so true oh my god we could talk a whole episode about this one you know friends and family will support you when strangers start to celebrate you mm. don't get that ladies and gentlemen okay yeah. 
thought I was crazy. Yeah, everyone called me crazy. Now they're calling me for a job. So <laughs> anyway, um, 40, thank you so much. I, I will try my best. And um, thank you to everyone who is here. Um, silence speaks volumes. Absolutely. Show them with your results. People don't care about what you say. You know, the reason, Matt, that people are um, inspired by us or me is because I am so <laughs> Everyone's going to think I'm a narcissist. Because I am so beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and, That's and what inspires me. Healthy and fit and beautiful, sure. <laughs> and uh, no, seriously. And that's why people are inspired by us. So everybody watching this, don't say it with your words. Say it with your actions, okay? That's why I'm trying to get fit. So everybody gets inspired by me being fit. That, that's my goal. Okay, number three. Sorry. I, uh, I just get excited talking about it. I like this. it. I like it. No Three. Matt, isn't that too much sugar? Mm. No, no, it is not. And you know why? Because again, I've educated myself from people like doctors Rick and Karen Dina, who just had a summit that I hope everybody caught. Um, if not, you know, they, they have webinars and other things. And next year, there'll be another one. But um, and people like Robbie Barbero and, and Cyrus Combato over at Mastering Diabetes. Um, you know, there are plenty of examples that we have in the raw vegan community, both of, you know, doctors, PhDs, um, you know, expert, other experts in the field like those guys. Um, and myself, I have personally, so I've learned from them and then I have tested it on myself. So I have a blood glucose reader here at home and I'll just, you know, every once in a while, I'll whip it out. I'll take my fasting glucose and then I'll drink my big smoothie or a juice and then I'll test 30, 60, 90, 120 minutes after that. And I'll just take a, a little survey of what my blood sugar or my blood glucose is doing. And every single time, it's just a nice subtle increase and a nice subtle decrease back under 100 where it's supposed to be. So no, it is not too much sugar. People conflate table sugar with fruit sugar. The sugar and nutrients, I don't, it's almost like a misnomer to call it sugar because it is so much more complex than that. It is such, it is a matrix of different elements that, that really combine into something much more than just sugar. So it is so important to make sure that you understand that fruit from nature, you know, in its bright, colorful, beautiful package. I'm not talking about Jeanette, I'm talking about fruit. <laughs> so you want to eat fruit as it comes in nature. You know, you can blend it up. You can juice it every once in a while, but eat whole fruits as much as you can. And you, your body knows exactly how to process and utilize those nutrients uh, in the most efficient and appropriate manner. So if you're curious, you can always get a, a super cheap. It's like 10 bucks for a glucose reader. And then it's, it's a little, it's, it comes out after you have to get the strips and the, um, uh, there's a few other things you have to get the little, uh, the pokey thing that gives you, makes you bleed. So you had to get a few things. It's like $30 total. And so once you get all the things, you can just test yourself and verify what your blood glucose level is doing. But in my experience, it has never been a problem. It has always been a very healthy rise and fall just as it's supposed to. Okay. First of all, I'm going to let Matt do all that. Let's just let Matt do all that scientific stuff. And um, we'll just wait for you, you to tell us the results. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I've got videos so people can go on my YouTube and check it out. Yes, please. We don't, we, we don't want to do that kind of work. Let's let Matt do all that. Um, yeah. Matt says fruit. I'm going to show a different fruit. I decided. And also, thank you so much. Le I, I can't say that name, but fruit <laughs> is life. Thank you for being here. And yes, there's a very bad uh, storm here. And... Yeah, thank you guys all for being here. Wow, we got, it. We got a lot of people here, so I'm excited. Number awesome. four question. The number four question, top, we're talking about the top 10 questions that we get asked about the raw vegan diet after living this lifestyle for 11 years. You know, by all, um, by all um, opinions, we are supposed to be dead. Matt and I are not even supposed to be here, okay? And um, so the next question is, where do you get your protein? I was certainly told by doctors mm. and friends and professionals that I was not 
going to be healthy without protein. And whether, and some of them told me, listen, you got to eat, at least you got to eat beans and um, you got to eat lots of nuts and you've got to eat, um, you know, uh, complete proteins like quinoa and things like that. I don't eat any of those things. I eat an abundance of fruit and vegetables, nuts and seeds, but rarely any nuts. I eat seeds in my dressing and I think Matt does as well. Nuts, once in a while, um, but rarely, okay? So I'm still here, I'm still breathing. In fact, I hate to do this, but I'm gonna just say it anyway. I'm healthier and <laughs> and better looking than most people I know. No, just kidding, guys. I'm, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm healthier and thriving and feeling better than most people I know. So don't tell me that it's not possible. It is possible. So here we go. Where do I get my protein from? I like to call it protein. I get it from everything on earth. So it's incredible, but Matt just put it so perfectly. This is not sugar. This is, what did you say? A complete matrix of what? Yeah, I, I blacked out. I don't know what I said. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it's, a, it's a complete matrix of different nutrients and you know, all that good stuff. I'm, I'm into it, okay. <laughs> It's a complete matrix of different nutrients. No, seriously, this is not just sugar. This is, this is all vitamins, minerals, nutrients, life force that you need. Boo boo, you don't need protein. You need life force. You wanna feel alive? You gotta eat things that are alive. You wanna feel dead? You've gotta eat things that are dead. Everything else is dead. If it's not a fruit or vegetable, it's dead. If it comes in a box, a can, a bag, a package, it's dead. You wanna feel that way? You wanna look that way? A lot of people are walking around looking like they're dead, feeling yeah. like they're dead, uh, dehydrated. And the reason why Matt and I, thank you for everyone who said this, that we're so glowing and beautiful, <laughs> or maybe it was just me that said this. Uh, the reason is because we are eating things that are alive and beautiful, vibrant, full of life force. Uh, check out Biophotons. How about that? You like that, Matt? Okay. Love it. Very nice. Yep, dropping that knowledge. Okay. <laughs> Number five. Number five. Don't you crave cooked or hot food, Matt? Don't you crave cooked food? Mm. Um, no, you know what? I don't crave cooked food. And, you know, as they say, you crave what you are made of. And so if you are constantly eating cooked food, yeah, it's going to be something that you're going to crave because that's just what you have built up your microbiome to recognize as your fuel. Um, so I, I don't crave cooked food, but I do utilize it when I need to. And so that is why, again, in the 21 Day Raw Transformation Program, I've got that traffic light system to help people understand how to create strategic boundaries for their dietary habits and so they're going to be specific yet flexible enough to give you guys a little bit of a wiggle room whereas you can add in a little cooked food if you need it like for me personally i use it when the fruit um, selection isn't as good or the fruit quality isn't as good here in minnesota you know i'm not down in florida like jeanette but um you know that's okay because you can make it work and, you know, you can use consciously cooked foods when you need them. I always tell people to put them in their salads to help with the digestion of it. Because as Jeanette said, you want to look bright and glowing and healthy. You want to eat hydrating, life-giving foods. So if you're eating too many cooked foods, it's going to dehydrate you. It's going to, you know, kind of take out that glow out of your, your face and your body. And so you want to put in those hydrating, electrical, conductive fruits and vegetables. So yeah, I would say no, I don't crave them, but I do utilize them so that I can stick with my healthy path and stay on stay on my diet plan um, and not fall off too far because that's where people get off track. You know, they they think they can't just eat raw. So then they're going to go off and have like an impossible burger or some, you know, vegan pizza from from Domino's or something like that. So I recommend setting better boundaries for yourself where you can bring in maybe some steamed vegetables, steamed potatoes, maybe some beans or something to put into your salad for dinner 
And that's going to keep you on a whole foods path where you're not getting off into the weeds with all those junky processed fake foods. All right. So you don't, you know, I don't crave them. I utilize them. And that's what I recommend for everybody else to uh, make sure you're sticking on your healthy path. Well said. I love it. Very, very uh, important information, guys. Um, so I, I'm going to move to the next question because Matt said it perfectly. I can't say it any better than that. Next question. Will I lose too much weight? Slash, is it possible to gain weight on a raw vegan diet? So a lot of people always ask me, okay, first of all, I want to say thank you guys so much for being here. I see your questions. I uh, will get to them. I promise you I'm writing them down. And I want to say thank you, 40, for such a great comment. What you eat today, you crave tomorrow. Yes. Yes. I think Chef AJ said that. That's what he said. So, mm. yeah, so true. So now, will I lose too much weight if I go raw? I'm afraid to lose too much weight. Slash, I don't want to lose any more weight. I actually want to gain weight. Is this possible? Yes, it is possible to gain weight on a raw vegan diet. I gained weight on a raw vegan diet. It is possible to lose weight on a raw vegan diet, and it is possible to lose too much weight. But this is possible with any diet. You can lose a lot of weight going keto, very unhealthy. You can gain a lot of weight going keto. You can lose gain, okay? So there's many ways to heal, and there's many ways to lose and gain weight. Now, you gotta do it right. So number one, you've got to eat when you're hungry, okay? And do not do too many cleanses because you want to be in perfect health a lot of people go wrong they're doing all these cleanses and trying to be perfect and they uh they're seeing other people online doing these things and they're like i want to be like this person online always doing a juice cleanse always doing a water fast or whatever meanwhile you have absolutely no idea what this person is really eating um you know we don't know there's a lot of people out there that are just making money on promoting their juice, their 90 day, uh, nine day juice cleanse or their, you know, supplements or whatever. So, you know, their keto book or their carnivore diet book program, please just know that you want to try it for yourself. Find somebody who's getting the results you want and see if it works for you. Does it, does it resonate with your heart? Does the diet resonate with your heart? There's, there's nothing healthier on earth than fruit and vegetables. And if you want to gain weight going raw, here's what you need to do. You need to eat enough. You need to eat an abundance of calories. You need to make smoothies, okay? Smoothies are a great way to pack in the calories with high calorically dense fruit like bananas, dates, mangoes, papayas, pears, uh, all, the, all the frozen fruit you can get, right? If you wanna put in some uh, nuts, you can do that as well if you want to make it, you know, even more calorically dense, right? You can do almond milk or you can put in like hemp seeds in your smoothie, things like that I would recommend. Um, I would recommend having an avocado every single day, having the fat things like the nuts and seeds, durian if you can get it, mami sapote if you can get it. Um, but you don't want to focus on the low calorie foods if you're trying to gain weight. If you're trying to lose weight, you want to focus on the low calorie foods, right? Okay, you want to focus on the, um, the watery rich things like oranges, all the berries, all the uh, watermelon, all the melons, okay? So there's ways to gain, there's ways to lose. You might lose some weight in the beginning, okay? Which Matt and I both lost weight in the beginning because that was stuff that was toxic and poisoning us from the inside out. You want to lose that weight and then you can easily gain it back just by doing what we do, which is eat, eat, eat an abundant Work out if you want muscles. If you want to be fit, you got to work out, okay? You're not just going to eat your way to being fit, but uh, I tried. <laughs> but um, that's my answer there. Okay, next question. I would ask Matt his, his, question, his uh, answer because I'm interested, but we got to move on. Yeah, no, move on. That, you nailed it. Thank you. Okay, so next we have number six, I believe. Matt, didn't our ancestors evolve by eating cooked food? Oh, good question. Well, I don't know. I wasn't there. So I'm curious, where are all the like, in between transition species between our prior selves and how we are today? Um, never seen them. But um, so anyways, the, the way that I answer that question, because I mean, there's going to be people saying all sorts of things. 
you can never prove that. That is not, it's not even, it's pseudoscience, you know? You can't prove who, what we were, what we looked like, what we ate. You know, they, they have different ways of guessing, but you can't prove it. What you can prove though, is what you can eat today without processing it. What tastes good to you today, right now? What makes you feel good today? That is how you know what is right for your body. So, you know, they can say we ate a bunch of, you know, wildebeest and woolly mammoths back in the day, and we should probably be eating that today. Um, but you'll see when populations eat a lot of meat, they get heart disease and they die early. So I don't know if that's really how nature set it up to have a, you know, a species continue to, to live. Um, but what we also see is that people that eat a plant-based diet have very good health outcomes. And so that's, that's what we see with the, you know, epidemiological, you know, studies out there, but you can, you don't even have to know that either. All you got to know is what I just said. What can you eat today? What tastes good to your tongue today that isn't processed by man? And now people might say, well, fruits are hybridized and they taste sweeter than they're supposed to and vegetables are different. Well, that's, that is maybe true. I, you know, we have selectively bred, you know, different plant foods to better suit ourselves. But the sugar content, as you know, Paul Neeson has shown he's gone to different uh, fruit farms down in Florida. They have trees that are over 100 years old, mango trees that the mangoes are even sweeter on those trees than they are on the on the trees that have been recently planted. So the fruits are not sweeter today than they were 100 or more years ago. They are meant to be sweet. Our tongues seek sweetness and saltiness. So we get the sweetness from the fruits, the saltiness a lot from the vegetables. And so these are things we can eat, we can digest, we can you know, thrive on without having any doctor or scientist tell us you know, that it's good for us. We can taste it. The tongue is the guardian of the body, right? So you want to give your guardian the, you know, put, put something in your mouth. Does it taste good? If not, the guardian's gonna kick it out. You know, he's gonna say, no, don't eat that. So if it's good, you can eat it, it's gonna digest well, it will eliminate well. And what we can see is that, you know, fruits and vegetables check all the boxes. They taste good, they go down. I mean, if you've, you know, if you haven't adulterated and perverted your taste buds to, to desire M&Ms and cookies and things. Um, but once you get onto a healthy path and you reset your palate and you get your microbiome in working order, you're gonna notice that fruits and vegetables taste amazing. You don't have to process them. You don't have to put sugar on them or anything like that. They taste good. They digest well. They make you energized. You sleep well, your energy is good. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm just going on here. But the, the fact of the matter is, if you can eat it today and it process, your body processes it well, you know, that is a very good indication that that is what is meant for your body. Yeah, I mean, honestly, this is like a master class to me. I wish I had this kind of information when I was a young kid, you know, when I was a teenager. So um, sorry if we are going on and on, guys. But hey, listen, this is important stuff. And what Matt just said is so true. You know, our taste buds, you might be saying, well, Matt, M&Ms taste good to me. Yeah, because they were designed... They were designed to trick you. Now, if you're like me and Matt and you've given up processed food for over a decade, if we tried to eat an M&M, it would actually taste disgusting. And let me tell you why. Because it's not familiar to us anymore, okay? What is familiar feels good and safe, psychologically, physically, mentally, emotionally. So I'm gonna go deep here, guys, okay? So, so just know that this is relating to all aspects of your life. If it's familiar, it feels good, okay? And so we have got to start to not only eat the fruit and vegetables, but abstain from the things that we know are not healthy because then they're not gonna feel familiar anymore. Fruit and vegetables are gonna feel familiar. And so we've gotta tell ourselves, um, basically, uh, I love eating fruit and vegetables. I love being healthy. I love giving my body what it really wants because our body really doesn't want processed food. Our body really doesn't want M&Ms. Our brain, we have convinced our brain that they are safe, natural, familiar, and normal to eat. And it is not. 
It is not normal, natural, or safe to eat animal body par parts or processed food. And 40 had such a great comment earlier. We have so many good comments. I yeah. wish so bad, Matt, that Instagram would let us save these comments because I want to read them later. And I, yeah. I just, I'm so, uh, I'm so mad at Instagram for that. But um, 40 had a great comment. He said that meat, um, that G Bryant says that although we may have eaten meat back in the day, it's not the same meat that we have today. Yes. And then yeah. today it has a lot of hormones and other icky stuff added to it too. So it's not just fruit that is like, might be hybridized, which yeah, sure, there's hybridized fruit. But if I have the choice between hybridized fruit and anything else on earth, I'm gonna go with the best option in a world full of good, better, and best. Go with the best option. Yeah. And, and think about it. Hybridized, we would naturally, things are naturally hybridized in nature. You know, animals eat what tastes the best. So we would go to an apple tree, we would eat the apples that tasted the best to us, and then we would go poop out the seeds in a field somewhere. And that tree, you know, would propagate from that seed from that apple you know we would be eating the sweetest best tasting fruits that we desired and then that would just naturally select the sweetest the most delicious fruit yeah and nicole just said my body doesn't want them my tongue wants my tongue wants them my body doesn't which is why we're always hungry even after eating 2500 calories of junk food we receive zero vitamins and mer minerals absolutely that's why you're still hungry because your body didn't get what it wanted so we have to start saying to ourselves and reprogramming the subconscious mind and saying, I'm making eating fruit familiar. I'm making drinking smoothies familiar. And how do you do that? You do it. You take the action and then you say to yourself, you know, this is part of my new lifestyle. I'm making preparing food familiar. I love taking care of myself. Even if you don't believe it, guess what? You just need to be willing to. The universe is going to help you with the how. You don't need to know how. You don't need to know all of the things that are gonna happen in your future. You just need to be willing to start to change. Okay, next question is, do I need a dehydrator? Okay, so no, you absolutely do not need a dehydrator. I made the mistake of buying one about 11 years ago. <clears throat> and um, it's funny because I thought that I went raw in 2012, Matt, but then I found the receipt to my dehydrator and it was 2011. And I was like, oh, I know that I bought it after I went raw. So mm. I, uh, in 2011, and thank you for the dehydrator for helping me with the timeline. <laughs> uh, that's the only purpose for my dehydrator currently. Seriously, I don't use it. I maybe use it once a year when these bundles come out and I wanna try one of these bundle recipes, seriously. Uh, I tried Matt's like uh, cauliflower wings recipe, mm. which was amazing. Um, and that's it. That's all I did last year. One thing. This year, I might make some kale chips once. And the reason why I don't use my dehydrator at all is because I don't want to feel or look dehydrated. And that's that. That's, that's, that's what it is. You are what you eat. You want to eat dehydrated food every day, you're going to feel and look dehydrated. Okay, uh, you don't need to do all this. And hey, in the beginning, if you want to use it for all the raw pizzas and cookies and cakes, do it. But once you get more appreciative of the simplicity of this lifestyle, uh, once you continue on your path, you are only going to want to eat things that are so delicious and simple and just like perfect as is. We don't need to alter these things. That's what I love about this lifestyle. It teaches me to enjoy the simplicity of life. And it's so complex. Uh, so, you know, we're saying a peach is so simple, but it's actually really complex. It's the matrix of all the things that Matt said. <laughs> so I gotta watch this because I, I wanna say that. It sounded very, I wanna sound smart. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, do you, number nine, do you take any supplements, Matt? Mm, good question. Uh, the only supplement that I take on a regular basis is B12. So I, I went my first seven years in this lifestyle. I didn't supplement with anything at all, not even B12, um, because I, you know, I, I thought that, you know, if you got your body clean enough that your, your body would just be able to maintain its B12 levels. Um, cause that's what I was hearing in, in the community. And so I did that. And then I tested my blood at, uh, about, it was seven years, I'm pretty sure. 
and I was super deficient in B12. So it was like, I, was, I think my number was like 82 and the low end ended at like 150. So, I, you know, I, I didn't necessarily notice any like symptoms or anything that I'm aware of, but um, I, I figured it was a good idea to just start supplementing B12. So, um, so B12 is the only thing that I supplement. I have experimented with a few different things over the last 11 years, like iodine and um, I, I used to take um, fish oil back before I understood that that was an animal product. So uh, in the very beginning, I was taking fish oil even before I went vegan. So it was after I went vegan, I stopped taking that. Um, I never got into like the LG based omega-3 supplements. Um, so, so yeah, no, I, I don't take anything. My blood work always comes out perfectly, you know, shining and sparkling. And um, yeah, so B12 is it for me. Um, and and I, I, some people like to take vitamin D, you know, if they're not in the sun very much, which even I'm not, you know, I'm in Minnesota. So half the year or more, I'm hunkered down in my house and it's gray overcast skies. Um, but I, I still haven't taken vitamin D. Um, so yeah, no, that's, that's pretty much my answer to that. Yeah, so I have a question about the iodine. Um, did you see any difference? Did you take it because you were you were deficient? I've always wanted to take iodine because of like Don Bennett's work and all mm -hmm. the things that I have heard about iodine. Um, you know, you could be deficient and your blood tests say you're not deficient. So yeah. like what inspired you to take it? I just wanted to ask that real quick and did you see any benefits? No, no, I didn't. And that, that was actually one of the kind of influences on me too, was Don's work. And then also uh, Dr. David Brownstein. Um, you know, I read his book uh, about iodine. And so, yeah, no, I just, I got some Lugals and I just started supplementing a little bit. Uh, I, what I should have done though, was test myself before I started supplementing. Uh, I didn't do that. And so I wouldn't even know if I was deficient or anything. I didn't have any, you know, I wasn't, you know, I didn't have any symptoms or anything, but I just read Don's work and I read Dr. Brownstein. So I just wanted to see if I would feel anything. And I honestly, I, I felt worse. <laughs> so maybe I was taking too much. I don't really know. But that's, that is the thing with supplements is that, you can throw other air, other minerals and other nutrients out of whack when you start taking supplemental forms of certain nutrients. So that's one reason why I don't, I really don't promote supplements other than B12, um, you know, which is a water sol soluble vitamin. So if you take too much, you know, it seems that you'll just pee out what you don't need. Um, but yeah, taking some of those other supplements, those minerals and things can, you know, potentially cause issues. So you got to be really careful with it. And if you're going to do that, I would recommend, um, you know, doing it with the help of like a plant-based doctor or, a, you know, somebody like that that's experienced with it. They know how to, you know, use it correctly. Um, and then make sure that you're deficient in the first place, because a lot of people just start taking supplements without ever doing blood work or anything, and maybe they never need it in the first place. So it's good to get the test done. If you're going to take some sort of mineral or other supplement, you know, work with somebody that's an expert in that to help you make sure you do it safely. Yes. Um, so I wanted to remind everyone that if you do have a question, we're going to start answering them. Please put them in the question box below. There is a separate section for questions. I see we have five ready. And so um, I also wanted to say that uh, somebody had a great point about blood work. They, Frank says he doesn't believe in having blood work too often. It can lower the immune system. I also believe this truly because not just because I read it, because it makes sense. Whatever makes sense to me. It doesn't make sense that we are, you know, taking blood out of our body to test it every six months or every yeah. year. I don't, I, you know, I'm guessing Matt also believes that. And, you know, anything that the mainstream is doing, um, I got a question. You know, I got a question yeah. that. I believe a lot of people do get, I'm not telling you not to ever get a blood test, get a blood test. But I believe a lot of people become deficient by constantly going to get their blood work done every three months, six months. And, um, you know, if 
I, I forgot to say, I got my protein uh, levels read after a, 12 years without eating dead animal body parts, and my protein was higher than normal. It was, mo it was, it was higher, it was in the normal range, but on the higher side. Okay, so I just want everyone to know that. Yes, I did get my blood test done after a very long time because I wanted to know myself, you know, I was very curious. Okay, so um, thank you guys for being here. Last question, although we have a few bonus questions. Um, sorry, so number 10 is I crave salty foods. What can I do to satisfy these cravings this is a great question. Okay, I also crave salty foods. Here's what I do. I drink a green juice every single morning. This is what I do. And I juice my celery every three days now, okay? Because I'm trying to have a life and um, besides juicing, okay? And then, so I have been doing celery every three days, celery and green juice. And this really helps me with my salty cravings at night. I find that I don't crave as much salty uh, stuff at night. Okay, and then the other thing I do is I have a savory meal every single day. I like to have it for dinner. I have a big, big salad. Um, sometimes I'll have a big thing of uh, zucchini pasta, or I'll make something fancy, like it very rarely, but I'll make like a tuna or tuno, as Matt says. <laughs> I've been making this for like 10 years, and then all of a sudden Matt comes up with his tuno, and all of a sudden everybody loses their shit. But <laughs> kidding. No, but anyway, um, so to know, which you can find the recipe in Matt's book. Um, you can also make a uh, pesto. Okay, mm -hmm. anything that with an O at the end. Anything <laughs> savory is gonna help you with those cravings. Okay, so dinner time is for the savory time. Make a savory dressing. Make some, put some spices in the salad dressing, or um, put some seaweed in there. Some nori if you're really craving salt. You know, the main thing is that. You want to think outside the box and, and think of fruit and vegetables that are salty, okay? So like greens are very, very salty. Chard, if you steam chard, oh my God, it's literally like eating pure salt for me anyway, because I haven't had salt in over a decade. Mm. But your taste buds will change. They change every seven days. Um, and so you will start to recognize the saltiness of tomatoes, of, cu of celery, of uh, peppers, of greens, of all the vegetables, okay? And um, yeah, so that's my solution for that. Also, you wanna take control of your life with the food choices you're, you're using, okay? So the next question. <clears throat> oh no. <laughs> well, we got through 10. It was not <laughs> fun, you guys. Thank you so much. It was a beautiful thing. Uh, I have no more questions, but perhaps this is no. <laughs> perhaps this is a good time to wrap it up. I just want to remind you that you are in control of your life and your cravings, and you have all the power. The donut doesn't have any power. You have the power, okay? Your willpower is stronger than the willpower of a donut. So on that note, Matt, I appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Back up next Saturday at noon. Uh, I will look for a new apartment yeah. <laughs> for them. And I appreciate you guys. I love you. Thank you, Matt. You're amazing. See you soon. Thank you. Good. Bye. Great to see you. Yep. Bye. <laughs>